Well, I'm truly thankful God's given us this time. I hope, mm -hmm. and I mean this sincerely, I hope that you've come praying, and I hope you've come seeking a blessing from God if you're able to stand tonight. 1 John chapter 3, starting verse number 1, the Bible says, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know, and I like that word, we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. And in Matthew chapter 20, verse 17 says, And Jesus, going up to Jerusalem, took the twelve disciples apart in the way and said unto them, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man shall be betrayed unto the chief priests and unto the scribes, and they shall condemn Him to death. And shall deliver him to the Gentiles to mock and to scourge and to crucify him. And the third day he shall rise again. Thank you. You can be seated. Let's go to the Lord in prayer tonight. Father, as we come to you one more time, we thank you for the day. Thank you for the way you took care of us and watched over us. Thank you, Lord, for the every need being supplied. We thank you for the health and strength you gave us just to be able to get up and go. Yeah. We thank you, Lord, for safekeeping from harm and danger, both seen and unseen. Lord, I don't think we probably have no idea how many times you put your hand down between us and danger just to keep us going, and we thank you for that. We thank you for the privilege we have tonight of coming back and meeting together in your house. I thank you for each one of these that's come out. Thankful, Lord, that we've got this time that we can spend together and worship together. I thank you, Lord, for every home and family represented. And God, tonight, I thank you for their faithfulness. I thank you, God, that just for being here tonight, they're showing their honor to you. They're not honoring the church. They're not honoring this pastor. But, Lord, they're honoring you by being here tonight. And I ask you, God, tonight to bless that faithfulness, to reward that faithfulness. And God, take care of every one of them. Yes, just give them an extra measure of blessings and grace for being out tonight. Father, I thank you most of all tonight for saving me. I thank you for the blood that Jesus shed at Calvary. Thankful it was sufficient to cleanse me of my sins. And I'm thankful, Father, tonight there never has to be another death, another sacrifice made. I'm thankful that blood did it all. He finished it. He completed it. God, I'm thankful tonight he left nothing undone. Didn't do anything halfway. God, please forgive me where I've failed you. Forgive me where I've come short. Forgive me, please, where I've let you down. And I want to ask you. Thank you. I want to thank you, Father, for the service already. Thank you for the time in the prayer room. Thank you for the songs that were sung. God has blessed our heart. But God, right now I need your help again. Father, I realize tonight that I'm standing. And God, if I stand alone, I'll do nothing. But God, if you'll stand with me in this holy place. And I, God, I truly believe this is holy ground. I believe that I'm going to stand in just a moment behind a sacred desk. And God, I beg you to help me tonight to preach as I never have before. I ask you, Lord, tonight to give me that touch. I ask you tonight to open up the scriptures to me and bring to mind the things that you have said. Pray tonight, God, that in these uncertain times, we'll remember we serve a certain, never-changing God. That in these wicked and evil days that we're living in, we know that one of these days, you're going to send your son after his bride. And we're going home. Father, watch my mouth tonight. 
Don't let me say it if you don't want it said. Only let me say the words that will be pleasing in your sight. Have your way through the rest of this service. For what you do, we'll thank you, we'll praise you. For we ask it in Jesus' holy name. Amen. I will make this statement again tonight. If you cannot believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, you don't have the salvation that only He offers. Yeah. You can say it's an impossibility. And when we look through Scripture, there's a lot of things that are impossibilities that are impossibilities when it comes to the ability of man. But I still believe tonight there's nothing impossible with God. I still believe tonight that he there was a day in eternity past that He stepped out on nothing and created everything that there was. Yeah. Just with the sound of His voice, mm -hmm. He spoke this world into existence. With the sound of His voice, He placed the sun, the moon, the star. Mm -hmm. The sound of His voice, He separated the land from the sea. With the sound of his voice created every animal, created every bird in the air and every fish in the sea. But man was different. He said, let us make man in our image. And he didn't speak man to existence. We were handmade. Mm -hmm. Breathed in our nostrils a breath of life and you and I became a living soul. God made the promise in Genesis chapter 3 that the deliverer was going to come. And thank God, a little over 2,000 years ago in the town of Bethlehem, the Deliverer was born. Born of a woman, born <laughs> under the law to redeem those that were under the curse of the law. Lived a sinless, spotless life. About the age of 33, crucified by Roman soldiers. Put him in a borrowed tomb. And again, today, we celebrate the fact that of his resurrection. And I said the fact of his resurrection. Right. That is not a fable. It's not a concept. I believe it just as sure. As I believe the sun's shining right now. Yeah. Amen. And he tells us here that. Again he told those disciples. We're going to Jerusalem. I'm going to die. But I'm going to rise again. On that third day. Now folks I believe that. Yeah. I believe that he was born of a virgin. I believe that he was able to do everything that Scripture teaches us, that he truly was able to open blinded eyes and unstop deaf ears and loose locked up tongues, that he was able to raise the lame and make them walk, raise the dead and give them life again. I believe that he was able to speak and lepers were cured. I believe he is able to speak. And devils came out of people. I believe tonight he was able to speak. And a woman that had an issue of blood for 38 years was immediately healed when she touched the hem of his garment. Yeah. I don't have a problem in believing in the resurrection of Christ. Mm -hmm. Now because I can believe all that. And I believe in the resurrection. I believe what 1 John says in chapter 3 that says it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when He shall appear, not when He might appear, not when He may appear, but that when He shall appear, we should be like Him, for we should see Him as He is. He told his disciples, I will rise again. And when they saw him come down off of that cross and go into that tomb, they thought everything was over. But he showed them that thank God through the power of God, he was able to come up out of that tomb victorious. And again, he's still alive this evening, sitting at the right hand of the Father. I made the statement this morning about those two men in white at the Mount of Olives. They said, why stand ye here gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, whom you see ascending, will come again in like manner, I believe. What he said in John chapter 14, when he said, if I go to prepare a place, I will come again 
and receive you unto myself. I believe 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, that the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the trump of God, the voice of the archangel, the dead in Christ will rise first. We which are alive and remain shall be caught up and changed, and we'll meet the Lord in the head. There shall we ever be with the Lord. I believe that this corrupt will put on incorruption. This mortal shall put on immortality, and then shall be brought to pass the saying, Death is swallowed up in victory. Yeah. I believe the day is going to come when he's going to make another appearance to his bride. I'm not talking about Revelation chapter 19. I'm talking about when he comes back to claim his own. Yeah. And he's coming. When he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Bear with me just for a few minutes. It's going to be a real simple message. And then I'm going to cut you loose in Hebrews chapter 9. And we may refer to chapter 9 for a couple of times. But in Hebrews chapter 9 verse 24 he says, For Christ is not entered. See, I've had people ask me, okay, where is he right now and what he's do what's he doing? Romans chapter 8 makes it plain. He's sitting at the Father's right hand making intercession for me and you. Right. Now, I mean, you don't have to have a degree in theology to know that. All you got to do is know how to read and get the book. Right. Where is he at? He still cares for me. Where is he at when I slip and I beg forgiveness and I repent of where I slip? He said, Father, he's one of ours. He's one of ours. When I'm starting to go through a, a valley, when I'm starting to face a storm, when I'm starting to face a trial, thank God he's there with me and he's helping make a way. You believe that, preacher? What did he tell Simon Peter? He said, Simon, Satan has desired to sift you as wheat. He wants you. He said, but I've prayed for you. I've prayed for you. He said, when you converted, you strengthened the brethren. And the same one who denied him three times, 53 days later, with the boldness of the Holy Ghost that God stood and preached. And 3,000 souls got saved. Mm -hmm. Don't tell me that he's not still helping his children alone. But he tells us in Hebrews chapter 9, for he's not entered in to the holy place made with hands, which are the figures of the truth. See, we had a high priest if you were a Jewish, under the priesthood of Aaron, they would go in, and they would go into that holy place. And, and I love I love to read about the Day of Atonement. And I know I've talked about it several times, and you might hear it two or three times tonight. But I like that Day of Atonement when that high priest would go in behind that second veil and place the blood on the mercy seat and the glory of God would come down. And that meant that God, He had respect to that offering of blood. Yeah. And sins were forgiven. But Christ has done something else. He didn't go in behind the second veil. He went straight to the Father. It says He didn't go in or didn't enter into the holy place with hands made by hands which are the figures. But into heaven itself. Now to appear in the presence of God. And now if you've got your Bible open, you know I left out the last two words. Now to appear in the presence of God for us. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. See folks, I'm thankful tonight. Now don't take this the wrong way. But Aaron, I don't care how much he did his job right, and I don't care how much the whole ironic line did their job right, I was not of the seed of Abraham. They did me no good. But John chapter 1 says he came into his own, his own received him not, but to as many as received him. Thank God that's me. That's you if you're saved. To them gave he power to become the sons of God. Even those that believe on his name. And now, now, thank God, I don't have to worry about Aaron. I don't have to worry about Eleazar. I don't have to worry about Phineas. Thank God tonight I've got Christ Himself who has gone into the very presence of God, not somewhere that man's hands have created, but He's gone into the very presence of God and He's gone before God for me. Amen. For me. Yeah. What's He doing? He's still working for me tonight. Mm -hmm. Think about that. The Lord of glory cares so much for me and you that He's in the presence of God 
He's not killing time to the resurrection. He's not just sitting up there, kicked back, doing nothing. Thank God he is still in the presence of God for me and you tonight. When you get to the idea, well, God don't know me and I'm not important. Yes, he knows you. He knows me. He not only knows the very number of the hairs on our head, he knows who the head belongs to. You go back in that Old Testament, and I know I've mentioned this before, but when you read about those men that God handpicked with jobs, there might have been several people named David or several people named John or several people, but he would call out a name, the son of such and such, of the tribe of such. God would, with him there was no mistake, he got specific. Yeah. He said, what's your point? He knew who they were. Yeah. Yeah. Thank God tonight he knows me. He knows me. You know, Roger's sitting back out, and he and I have the same name. But God does not get confused over who needs what. Yeah. God does not get confused. I ain't being funny. Think about this. God don't get confused about who's talking to him, who's calling on him, who's asking for help, and what they need. Mm -hmm. We both need him. We might need him in different ways. God ain't going to send me what he needs. And he ain't going to send him what I need. Yeah. He knows specifically who. So he's not entered into those holy places made by hands, which was a figure of the truth. See, that tabernacle was just a picture of the heaven that, that he's in right now. See, that tabernacle was divided into three sections. And thank God the high priest had to go into the third one. Thank God tonight Christ has gone to the Holy of Holies, appeared in the very presence of God the Father, placed the blood on the mercy seat. I'm going to get ahead of myself. Placed the blood on the mercy seat. God saw the travail of His soul and was satisfied. Don't worry about what Jesus is doing tonight. He's still out looking after you, me, and you. You say, okay. He's going to, he's, he's coming back. He's appearing in the presence of God now. So what are you and I supposed to do? How are we supposed to live our life? We're supposed to keep the faith in the one that died for us. Yeah. Now listen to me. Sometimes I know this world gets rough and I know it gets tough. And I know it gets dark. And it'd be awful easy sometimes, and I mentioned Jeremiah this morning, but it'd be awful easy sometimes just sit down and quit. Don't tell me it won't, and don't tell me some of y'all ain't done fall of it. Some of you's all right to thought about throwing in the towel and said, it ain't worth it. I'm done. I ain't going back to church. I ain't reading my Bible. I'm not going to pray. I'm done. But because you're saved by the grace of God, you got the Holy Spirit of God indwelling within you, you can't just walk away. Yeah. You can't do it. So what are we supposed to do? Paul told Timothy, fight the good fight of faith. And I'm going to tell you now, Sometimes it is a fight. Amen. Being faithful to a holy God ain't for sissies and it ain't for wimps. You got listen to me. That's why you don't go into battle naked. You put on the whole armor of God. Amen. And don't ever forget that sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Stand on it. Wield it. Hold it. That's the only way you're going to be able to fight the devil. It's the only way I can fight him either. So fight the good fight of faith. But how are we supposed to do that? Paul says on down in chapter 6, verse 7, that we're to fight that fight of faith and keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable. He said, what do you mean? Don't give anybody an opportunity to say, well, I can remember when you quit serving God. I can remember when you quit going to church. I can remember when you when you just stopped. I can remember when you used to do all this for God, but you don't do it anymore. Oh, nowhere, nowhere are you ever going to read in Scripture that a child of God is to surrender and accept defeat. Mm -hmm. You will not find it. Right. We are to fight that fight of faith and we're to keep that commandment and live a life unrebukable without spot until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Jesus asked the question, I can't remember now what chapter it is in the Gospel according to Luke, but he said, when the Son of Man cometh, 
Will they find faith on the earth? That's why, and I'm just going to say this, that's why churches ain't, ain't full like they used to be. Mm -hmm. Oh, preacher, you know, I, I, I think it's because people don't like the preaching and people don't like the singing. It's my point. Mm -hmm. I've told you before, I know, what, I know what a lot of people in this world want. It don't take long and you ain't got to drive far. You find you a church where, where they got the smoke and they got the lights and, and they got this and they got that and they got the people on the stage dancing around and wiggling and, and just, hey, don't tell me that's worship. I said, now I'm preaching. You, you well, know, say what you want to. I told you a few weeks back that I, I tried myself to be, tried to be real careful before I, before I started talking about things in that big revival meeting, so-called revival meeting that's happening out there in Kentucky. Mm -hmm. I, again, I ain't trying to be ugly. But when the majority of the speakers... Uh -huh. Now you go back. I ain't going to tell you something you can't check. Right. I'm going to tell you something you can't verify. When the majority of the speakers were women mm -hmm. or homosexuals, Right. Mm -hmm. Don't you tell me God's in it. Amen. Amen. Anytime. <laughs> Anytime a woman stands before a group of a mixed company. Mm -hmm. God ain't nowhere about it. Amen. You can say amen or oh me. I don't care. I'm just telling you what the book says. That's rebellion. Yep. Pure and simple. Well, preacher, you know, there's a lot of churches that's got women. Well, they're out of the will of God. Right. Amen. He's coming. Mm -hmm. We better make sure that we're keeping that fight of faith, standing on that book, there's things we're going to fight against. There's things we're going to have to stand against. There's things that we're going to have to go up against. And you better know enough of the Word of God so that you can go up against it. Mm -hmm. He said, Preacher, all I'm hearing you talk about is faith here. Like, well, you know, again, without faith it's impossible to please Him. Yeah. And the Bible says in Romans chapter 14 that if it is not of faith, it is sin. Yeah. We need to do tonight is fight the good fight of faith. Don't give up. Don't quit. Don't let down. Because one of these days he's coming back. And what scares me is if he comes back, how many church, so called churches, are there in this country? that's not even going to realize he's come back. Because the next Sunday morning it's going to be business as usual. Mm -hmm. <coughs> well, sure, we could change a lot of things. I could have this place filled in three weeks' time. Promise you. If we would let down on some things. Yep. And we compromise some beliefs. And we compromise the Word of God. But that ain't standing faithful. Amen. Amen. Right. See, preacher, what, what are we supposed to do? You stand faithful. Yeah. He's coming back. He will appear. Yeah. Now, when is He coming? I couldn't tell you. You say you're looking for Him. Absolutely. Yeah. The Bible tells us in the book of Titus that. The grace of God that brings us salvation has appeared unto all men, teaching us to deny ungodliness, chapter 2, and to live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Mm -hmm. But let's don't forget verse 13 and 14 right after that. Looking <coughs> for that blessed hope and glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. <coughs> When you are looking for something, that word looking don't mean that you're going through the cabinets 
or you're going through your dresser drawers, or you're out in your building and you're going through this pile of mess or that pile of mess, that word looking means you are waiting expectantly. You know it's coming. You know it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. If the Lord, listen to me, if the Lord don't come back first or the Lord don't call me home in the morning, I'm going to see the sun rise in the east. Mm -hmm. It does every morning. <coughs> And I don't care how dark it gets. Me and the preacher was talking yesterday and, and he said, you know, this is just a dreary day and this is one of those days for a funeral that people just expect. It's cold and rainy. I said, but preacher, don't you ever forget. I said, I don't care how dark the clouds are. The sun's still shining on the other side. Mm -hmm. I know it's there. There are things that we can expect Things that we truly know are going to happen. And I am looking for that appearing. Yeah. And I got to tell you, be honest with you, I'm surprised that it already happened. Yeah. Looking for that blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, waiting for Him to come knowing that He is going to... That, and that's what First John says here. But we know that when He shall appear. John said He's coming back. You're going to see Him. You're going to know Him. John says, I've already saw Him. And later on, John saw Him on the Isle of Patmos. But we will see Him as He is. But we're not going to see Him as a meek and mild and lowly somebody that they're going to beat around. He's coming. Are you looking? If you're not looking, it's hard for me to believe you're saved. He said, preacher, you said a lot of that today. Well, well, if we don't have faith in Him, we can't be saved without faith. Amen. We can't be saved if we don't believe the resurrection. And it's hard for me to believe we can be saved if we ain't looking for it. He's coming. And he made it plain in the, in the book of the Revelation that his reward would be with him. Paul said in 2 Timothy chapter 4, he said, I'm now ready to be offered. And the time of my departure's hand, I've Fall a good fight. I finished my course and kept the faith henceforth. There is laid up for me a crown of righteousness through the Lord. The righteous judge shall give unto me in that day, and not to me only, but to all those that love his appearing. See, that's the scary part. If you're a saved child of God, y'all be looking for it. Y'all be praying for it. Y'all be praying just like Revelation chapter 22 says, even so come quickly, Lord Jesus. Y'all be saying, Lord, I'm waiting for you to come back. The world's getting dark. We need that light. We need to see you come back on that cloud of glory. We need you to hear you. Call us home. We want, not, not, we want to get out of this world. We want to see you looking for that appearance. But all those that love His appearing. And you said, well, preacher, there's going to be some that... You're right. There's going to be some that ain't going to love that appearing. There's going to be some that's going to realize what happens. There's going to be some that, that that day when they get home and find their children's gone and there's no trace of them. Their spouse is gone. There's no trace of them. They get home. And they find out. Parents are gone. Neighbors are gone. They hear on the news and all of a sudden there's so many that's disappeared and there's no scientific explanation for them. And some of them that have heard the gospel, some of them that have sent through a message from a God-called preacher have ignored it completely, they're going to know what's happening. Mm -hmm. And they're going to say, I missed it. But they will not love the appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, what do we need to do? We need to accept the fact He is coming. 
He's appeared before God now and He's making intercession for you and I. What we need to do is we need to live by faith until that appearing takes place. What we need to do is be looking for that appearing. What we need to do, thank God, is love that appearing. But the Bible tells us something. We'll go back to Hebrews chapter 9. And I'm trying to hurry. We know what in Hebrews chapter 9 in the verse 27, I guess, it said, and as it is appointed unto man once to die, and after this the judgment. But then you look at verse 28, and it says, So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. And unto them that look for Him shall He appear the second time without sin unto salvation. You said, what do you mean without sin? I thought you said He was a sinless spot or something. He was. And still is. Right. But you need to understand what happened at the cross. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians that He that knew no sin was made, was made sin for us. That we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. My sins were dumped on Him. Your sins were dumped on Him. And the sins were so permeated on Him that He literally became sin. Now let's go back to the Day of Atonement. Now remember, Jesus Christ, the Bible says 1 Corinthians chapter 15, was our Passover. Our sins were dumped on Him. He went to the cross. He died. He was that sacrificial lamb. He was that propitiation. He was that innocent victim that paid the price for me and you. And when they saw Him covered in His own blood and God the Father saw Him with all our sins upon Him. When He left this world, He left as the Lamb of God. Now, where did he go? We said he went in to the Holy of Holies, not made by hands, to appear before God. Go to the Day of Atonement. And we see the high priest as he goes in, walks through the door. He's got the basin of blood, and the Bible tells us that he's got the blood for not only the sins of the people, but his own sin. That's the difference in that high priest. Oh, Jesus didn't have to have blood for his own sin. He goes behind that first veil. There's the table of showbread. There's the table with the candlesticks. There's the altar of incense. But then, carrying that basin of blood, he goes behind the second veil where there is no light at all. None. As he walks through the darkness with the blood, he gets to the mercy seat. He places the blood on the mercy seat. And I mentioned it this morning. The glory of God comes down. And when that glory comes down, God accepts the sacrifice for the nation of Israel and has forgiven their sin. When the high priest, they see the high priest as he goes in and he's carrying the blood. And that blood represents the sin. The high priest is bearing the sin. Listen to me now. Remember the high priest's garment, what he had on. He had on a breastplate that had 12 stones that represented the nation of Israel. Right. And those 12 stones next to his heart, because that high priest cared for those people, he had on his shoulders two pockets sewed in. And on each side of his shoulders, there, were two, there was a onyx stone on each side. And on one side... There was the, the name of six of the tribes that was engraved in, and on the other side, the other six. Right. 
Right. You say, what's the point? He was bearing the weight of the entire nation on himself. Mm -hmm. And as he goes in, he is carried by having that blood, having those two onyx stones, having those twelve stones on He goes in bearing the sin of the nation of Israel. And he walks in. And don't you tell me he was skipping along happy. He wasn't whistling Dixie going through there. Because if something had not been done right, he was not going to walk out of there. He'd have walked behind that second veil and God would have killed him dead in a hammer. Mm -hmm. And the nation of Israel, they see him go in, bearing their sin. And then they wait in faith. Listen to me. <laughs> Make a dried up match. They wait in faith for him to come back out. Mm -hmm. They saw him go in. He goes out of sight. But they're waiting by faith for him to come back out yeah. so they can see him again. And thank God the glory of God comes down. God accepts the sacrifice. Yeah. The sin of the nation of Israel is forgiven. He turns around and he goes back out past that, that veil. He goes back in outside that second veil. And he walks through the courtyard. And when they see him and he appears that time, they don't see him as a man carrying sin. They see him as the victorious high priest that has done the job, completed the job, and now for another year, salvation has come to the nation of Israel. The day is going to come. Jesus Christ went to that cross, made sin for us, died for our sins, Pay the punishment for that sin. But the second time he appears, he will appear without sin under salvation. Thank God the sinless, spotless Lamb of God is coming after the bride that he died for, the bride that he bore the sin for, the bride that he placed the blood on the mercy seat for. Amen. He will appear the second time without sin under salvation. Thank God. And just as the nation of Israel, listen to me, they knew what Paul was talking about at that last trump. They waited in faith for the high priest to come out. And when they saw him come, the ram's horn began to blow over the city of Jerusalem. And the nation of Israel knew everything's all right because the job of the high priest was completed. Thank God, when the trump of God sounds, we're going to know everything's good, everything we've expected, everything we've hoped for, everything we've believed in, everything that we've been waiting on. Thank God the trump's going to sound. You and I are out of here. We are out of here to be with Jesus and to spend eternity with Him for dinner. When He shall appear. We should be like him, but here's the problem. Thank God I know he's coming back. I recognize him as Lord. I recognize him as Master. I recognize him as Savior. I recognize him as Redeemer. I recognize him as Messiah. I recognize him as the Lamb of God. I recognize him as my only hope. In John chapter 21, the Bible says, But when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore, and the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. You remember? Peter said, I go fishing. And they said, We also go with you. We fished all night and caught nothing. They hear a voice from the shore. They see the smoke of the coals coming up. Children! Have you any meat? <coughs> they don't know it's him. Yeah. Cast your nets over on the right side. They did and they began to put, and all of a sudden John looks over at Simon Peter and says, Peter, that's the Lord. <laughs> it took a minute for them to recognize him. You remember? Just like Mary 
in chapter 20, Mary thought he was the gardener. Yeah. She didn't recognize him until he spoke her name. There's people in this world tonight don't recognize him as Lord. They don't recognize him as Savior. They don't recognize him as the only door to heaven. He's just a good man. Oh, he was more than a man. And I'm here to tell you tonight, those that fail to recognize him for who he is, oh, he's going to appear anyway, whether they believe it or whether they don't. You know, one time I tried to tried to preach a message, and I wasn't trying to be funny, but I tried to preach on ready or not, here I come. Well, let me tell you something. He's given everybody an opportunity to be saved. Mm -hmm. And what we've done with that opportunity is up to us. If we've refused to accept Him, then we do not recognize Him as the only Redeemer. In 1948, when the nation of Israel raised the Star of David, the United States was the first foreign country to recognize them as an official nation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What we did by recognizing them was saying they have a legitimate right to be where they are. They have a legitimate right to that land. They have a legitimate right to begin a government. If we refuse to recognize Christ as Savior, then we're saying we don't need Him. We're saying He's not worthy. We're saying it doesn't matter. We're saying I'm not going to follow Him. Folks, let me tell you this tonight and I'm done. He's coming again. He will appear. And what we need to do is just live by faith till we hear the voice call us home. What we need to do is look for Him until the voice calls us home. See, I'm thankful tonight. Listen to me. I'm thankful tonight that there's no doubt in my mind He is the, not A, He is the Savior of the world. That He is the High Priest. He is the, not only the High Priest, but the only Sufficient sacrifice. And that when He comes again, He'll not come to die again. He'll not come to place the blood again. That's already done. He will appear the second time under salvation. Thank God He's coming. Now what are you going to do with Him tonight? Do you accept Him? Do you recognize Him for who He is? If you don't, you will not look forward to His appearing. If you refuse to recognize Him as Savior, you don't want to see Him come back. But I'm thankful tonight that we can look at Him and just as Job said, I know that my Redeemer liveth and will stand at the latter days upon this earth I, I, like, I like Job. In chapter 14, he said, If a man die, will he live again? And he answered his own question in chapter 19 when he said that. He said, Because even after this skin, worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. And I'll see Him for myself. One of these days, He's going to appear, and I'm going to see Him for myself. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I'm convinced tonight, ain't nobody going to have to tell me who He is. I'm going to know Him when I see Him. I will recognize the one that died for me. I'll recognize the one that loved me. I'll recognize Him for who He is tonight. Do you? If you don't, the Bible says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Father, as we come to You again, thank You for the day. Thank You for the blessings and mercies You supply. I thank you, Lord, for the way that you took care of us and watched over us and supplied our need. We thank you for allowing us to look at a portion of your word. And I pray tonight, God, I said what you had me to say. I pray tonight, Father, that I said it the right way. Father, realize tonight, and I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, Jesus is coming again. 
I know that just as sure as he came up out of that tomb, one of these days he's getting up off of that throne and he's coming back in on that cloud and he's going to call his children home. I got no doubt about that, Father. But if there's anybody under the sound of my voice that does not recognize him as Savior, God, I beg you tonight to deal with them, to touch them, to let them realize Jesus is the way, not a way. That beside him there is no other. Have your way in the rest of this service for what you do. We'll thank you. We'll praise you. But we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.